Hey, everybody. This is the Heart is a Muscle podcast with Joseph and Jordan, and we are here in beautiful Puerto Vallarta. This is our new nomadic life, Woo! but we're going to talk about something serious today. Jordan, what are we talking about? Well, we are going to give you updates on things that we have been learning in our experience as we move to a different country. But then we also talk about nonverbal communication, body language, things to look out for, things to get curious about. There's a lot of really, really good nuggets. I had a, a huge aha moment for my own self, my own parts um, that I'm sure you can relate to. So good shit good shit you're gonna learn how to be that jedi and see your partner on another level so stay tuned and if you like this episode make sure to like us subscribe and hit that dingle dongle bell so next time Whee! one of these comes out you'll get a notification so enjoy everybody enjoy all right everybody welcome to the heart is a muscle Port of Ayrta version. Yeah. <laughs> Mosa Mexico. Yes. If you don't speak Spanish, that means we're in Mexico, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak Spanish very well either. We're going to be working on it. Mm -hmm. So here we are. The heart is a muscle that has evolved and leveled up one more level. And now we're going to continue this from afar. I know some of you who've been paying attention heard that we were going digital nomad. And now that reality has become this reality. We're here. Yeah. It's like, it's been a pretty cool realization of like, oh man, this is a life I've been wanting to live for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And here we are living it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so in this episode, we're going to talk about a pretty relevant topic. And we're also going to give you kind of a little rundown of how things have been going because it's been a little bit of a spell since we've recorded an episode, since we've been in total transition from our life down in Southern California to a short little stint up in Portland, Oregon, which was actually really great. Mm -hmm. It was really nice. And then taking the big plunge and you'll see some new artifacts. You're going to see towels because it's hot out here. It's hot as balls. Maybe. It's like 90 degrees, 90% yeah. humidity. You're going to get the, the full experience because we might be yep. a little sledding and just be like, oh, let me help you out there, Jordan. <laughs> and then you'll also see these bottles Lots of water. of water. And if you're listening to this, you won't see any of that. So just bear with us. <laughs> <laughs> just know the towels and the bottle of water yeah. are here. So you get the full Puerto Vallarta experience. <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting up here on our rooftop little patio thing mm -hmm. it's it's been really nice last night there was a thunderstorm oh that was it was cool. really cool yeah yeah if you don't know anything about port of Vallarta, it's basically kind of a port city on the side of a mountain that's right next to the ocean and so i don't know the exact meteorology meteorologically truth about this but i can suspect that there's a lot of nice hot air coming from the inland and a lot of ice not ugh, and a lot of wet cooler air coming from the ocean and when they meet over the mountains fireworks happens because just Fuckin'. about every day there's thunder and lightning and big poofy clouds and you know what it just makes it exciting to be here i'm so excited to be here with you jordan yeah same baby and we are excited to be here with all of you beautiful people out there trying to do your best in a relationship and we're going to help you make that just so much easier <laughs> that's right that's right so right so yeah like what i was saying we were we left southern california behind that ended up being kind of our our first nomadic piece of existence yeah was, i was there less than a year yeah we thought we were going to be there for a couple of years and then fate handed us a new hand of cards and was fate like said go to mexico yeah i was like play these yeah how about you play these <laughs> it's a better hand i would say I, like, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I like where our life is trending. Mm -hmm. I think we played the Southern California hand pretty well. And then it yeah. was like, nope, time to fold that one. Deal us out another one. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, then we were up in Portland, Oregon, visiting the the fam and the friends. That's where we're originally and from. And the nature. And the nature, I yeah. So many hikes up there. We did a lot of hiking. And you know what? I want to give a tip of the hat to Portland, Oregon. God damn, girl. Because Man. if you haven't been to the Pacific Northwest in the summer, in I'm, the summer, I'm talking about June, July, August, even a little bit of September, like probably mostly July, though. Yeah, it is awesome. The weather's yeah. good. It's nice and hot. It's not humid. 
Yeah, it's not humid. It's really crisp and it's cool. Really crispy. It's really nice. But yeah, we went on tons of hikes, saw lots of good friends, and we're able to relax and kind of prepare. Mm-hmm. And then we jumped on a plane, flew to Salt Lake, then down to Puerto Vallarta. And we've been we've been here. This is our third full day, correct? Maybe I think our fourth. I think yesterday was our third full day. Because we yeah. got here on Wednesday. We got here Wednesday. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yes, this is our fourth day. Thank you, Jordan. Yeah. It's all <laughs> in my head. She's the brains of the operation. I'm just the <laughs> he he's the, the execution. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's been pretty easy to get things going. This is a really fun city. And man, tons to see here too. We were in the botanical gardens yesterday. Oh way out in the jungle. So much green. Yeah, way out in the jungle. Proper jungle. Yeah, it was beautiful. Mm-hmm. I'm really glad we went. It was hot as balls, though. Like, that's the thing that we just kind of had to accept, at least for me. Like, I just had to accept that, yeah, I'm just going to be sweaty all the time here. And sometimes I'll just be, like, absolutely drenched in mm-hmm. sweat. And that's just going to have to be okay. Yes. And so far, it has been. It's been I mean, fine. We're living... it's, it's been true. And it's been fine. <laughs> You're going to literally watch us experience and surrender yeah. to that. Yeah. Because we're upstairs in our little nice patio up here. And we're in the shade. But it's still hot. It's still really hot. Yeah. And we're just sitting here just basting. Yep. But I love this kind of weather. I was first exposed to this going down to Louisiana. Oh, uh, Nolens. Nolan. Nolens. Nola. And I thought I was going to hate it. But then cruising around the French Quarter and all that kind of stuff, you're just like, yeah, it's sticky and gross down here. And I love it. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so I dig this weather. Yeah, I've just accepted I'm going to have a shiny face and frizzy hair. Mm-hmm the whole time that's okay yeah but look at I you, you still look so good i know i can yeah. there's great jungle energy in yeah. jordan james yeah mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> and uh, jordan speaks fairly good spanish i've been extremely impressed with her spanish she's just Aww. been keeping us going yeah it's enough to get around it's gotten yeah gotten our needs met i have enough spanish to be at probably a two-year-old level <laughs> so i'm learning more words every day yes yeah we both are i'm excited to see where we're gonna be in a few months Mm -hmm. or especially by the end of our trip here where we're at with our spanish Mm -hmm. that's kind of the cool thing about like i don't know traveling and stuff because it's like man who will i become who am i about to become like by the end of this like who am i gonna be yeah that's the thing that's been so crazy is like we're just becoming new people really rapidly here like because you become somebody new when you put yourself in situations when you have to think different thoughts yeah and goddamn we got we have to think different thoughts here it's just it just like happens naturally we don't have to try to like think different thoughts Mm -hmm. we just have to Mm -hmm. to like navigate existence so that's been really really fun it's been like yeah. a little bit it was overwhelming at first but now i'm like kind of getting in my rhythm with it and found some good rest today which was nice what, like describe your overwhelming because from my experience i don't think you've been overwhelmed at all you seemed pretty much in your stride and pretty confident most of the way and like i think i only had a few moments of like real sadness slash like oh my god moments like as we were like landing in Puerto Vallarta like on the plane just being like oh man yeah we're here now like did you yeah gotta, like make this happen but then just kind of being like okay yeah I hear I hear that and now we're here so is there anything else you want to say parts and they're just like no <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, like, okay well I feel better now because all these other parts were just like, oh, yeah, now we get to, like, get our plan in motion. And, you know, we still we're going to take a few days and kind of get acclimated. So it's not like there's a big rush rush or pressure to do anything. So, yeah, it was really kind of fun to I wouldn't say fun because having extreme emotions is never fun. But as far as <laughs> unless emotions, you're me, <laughs> eh, your emotions are never that extreme. Yeah, well, you're not the one feeling them. <laughs> Outwardly, they're never that extreme. Yeah. I'll, I'll put a caveat on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you asked me a question? I think you asked me a question. All right, anyways. Here I, we go. <laughs> I think it was, oh, oh, about being overwhelmed. Oh, yeah, because, like I said, outwardly, I don't think you've shown, you haven't had any, like, verbal cues or nonverbal cues you've been overwhelmed. And, like, yeah. your energy has seemed pretty good. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, actually, this kind of ties into what we were going to talk about, mm -hmm. which was like nonverbal communication. Yeah. Reading the language of each other's bodies and stuff yeah. like that. This yeah. Is a super duper relevant thing for mm -hmm. relationships because. <laughs> because like, Chad GPT said Well, so. <laughs> yeah, besides Chad GDP, he doesn't know everything. But this topic has come up in many searches using G Chat GDP. Uh, GPT. GPT. <laughs> Nobody. It, it's Chat blah blah blah. It's it's hard to be dyslexic out here, baby. We need to give him a name like uh, Frank or something like that yeah. when we refer to Chat GDP because GPT. Chat GPT. <laughs> what do I say? Chat GDP. Chat GDP. Yeah. Yeah, he's getting his his GED. <laughs> Chat GED. Chat GED. GED. Chat buddy is what we're gonna call him for now. Aww. Our AI friend. Mm -hmm. Until he's not a friend anymore. He'll always be our friend. Okay. And so, yeah, nonverbal communication. Like, I always remember this famous line from The Little Mermaid, the 1992, or is it 1992? Whatever, the animated version, where Ursula the Sea Witch is like, and don't forget the importance of body language. Oh, oh, I yeah. Watching that as an adult being like, that. Hell yeah, you get some, you evil saucy witch. Yeah, you evil octopus. <laughs> because she knew about relationships and she knew more about humans than any of the mer people did. She knew it was up because that's true. Body language is hella nonverbal communication. And you need to pay attention to that because you can miss a lot of stuff. And you can also pick up on a lot of good stuff too. So well, let's finish our thought here because <laughs> you have been not really or at least from my perception, not putting out a lot of nonverbal communications, you've been overwhelmed, but you've been feeling some overwhelm? Well, d like when we first got here, I did experience a little bit of culture shock that I wasn't expecting. Because mm -hmm. like I've been to the real parts of Mexico before, not just like resorts. Like I've stayed with like actual people who live here. I've been to like Peru and Colombia Argentina. and Argentina and Greece and like but yeah, so I just, I wasn't expecting, I wasn't expecting to feel shocked and it was, it's, it's hard to explain what it felt like because it didn't really come with like judgments or anything like that. It didn't necessarily even really come with fear. Like maybe that was more of the emotion, but it was just like a shock of like a new lifestyle. The energetics are different. The visuals are different. Mm -hmm. Like. Oh, also just realizing if we were walking around a neighborhood like this in the States, like my mind would register it as like not a safe place to be. Mm -hmm. And so like, I think just like reorienting my perspective on things again, mm -hmm. like th that's kind of what had to happen. And so I think the shock, it just, I was just like ushered into a new version of myself, like reorient or, mm -hmm. you know, like you, you can't, you can't keep the same orientation anymore mm. and so i think that's mostly what the shock and the overwhelm was like it was like okay yeah what is my new orientation here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nice yeah yeah how how were how did you communicate with your parts about that i was real sweet to them like uh, before uh, before i i might have been somebody that would have like beat myself up about that of like isn't it just so classic that we beat ourselves up for feeling the way that we feel and we like make ourselves wrong at least I do this make myself wrong for feeling the way that I feel if it's not like an admirable feeling well that's the way we were raised so. yeah and so <laughs> like in the past I would have probably done that but I didn't do that this time mm -hmm. and I did I I don't know if I like I don't know if I expressed it with my physical body but I did express it with my words that I'm feeling culture shock or that I'm mm -hmm. a little bit overwhelmed. Like, and I said that to you, I said that to one of my friends and the, just being able to admit it, I was really surprised at how quickly I moved through it and like mm -hmm. found a sense of joy and comfort and, mm -hmm. and tenderness again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then, then like I've noticed I've gone through waves of like, of, feeling a little bit overwhelmed or feeling intimidated by like going out and doing something new, you know, speaking another language that I don't really know how to speak like fluently, you know, like my three parts had to come to the understanding that we're not going to be cool here. <laughs> we're not going to, we're not going to fit in here at least, you know, like we're totally going to fit in. 
<laughs> I'm six two and like a white girl. I'm and that doesn't really know how to speak Spanish. Like I'm just not gonna. That's why we'll fit in. Yeah, <laughs> we're so odd. We're perfectly placed. Yeah, I, I guess I just had to like have kind of a talk with my three parts of accepting. Like we're just gonna be who we are. Like mm -hmm. this is not about impressing anybody. That's actually part of like what we're releasing. Mm -hmm. But anyway, what I wanted to say about the nonverbal communication when I'm overwhelmed is when I'm overwhelmed, I shut down. Mm -hmm. I don't like freak out. I don't like, I, I probably get quieter. Mm -hmm. But then also like, I feel like that's kind of a, I don't want to say trauma response because I'm not trying to be dramatic. I think it's just like part of growing up. I've learned to grow up. I've learned to like navigate life is through like hiding what I actually feel mm -hmm. even in my physical body and like I think there's some things that can't be hidden like I think your body always kind of tells on you mm -hmm. on some level that's the importance that's why nonverbal communication is so important yeah a lot of the times it's probably the only part of you that's really telling the that's truth being honest yeah because mm -hmm. what did we say before like when we were talking about the the four inner kingdoms that we have our mind our heart and our body and then our essence our divinity mm -hmm. that our body just doesn't know how to lie yeah it, it can't it, it can't, can't lie. lie yeah it doesn't lie yeah and and our mind parts especially can get really frustrated about that because mm -hmm. our mind parts can they have no problem like that that's a skill For that lives they, are created in yeah the in the mind yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. and our mind can get so frustrated by the honesty of our body mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah right that's a great way of putting it yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so yeah i think just how my parts have learned to navigate that is to just kind of like shut my body down mm -hmm. and so i instead of like like instead of beating myself up for shutting down or or like going dorsal if we want to talk about it in poly terms of polyvagal theory we do we do i mean i do and going like our our dorsal the dorsal branch of our nervous system is the shutdown is like that's what happens when there's no hope left like that's basically your body kind of playing dead mm -hmm. and, and it's and it's smart like it's an intelligent survival mechanism right and but so often since we live in a society and a culture that values action and movement and doing and the more like yang energy of things yang energy of things oh. we we can <laughs> yeah i think that's a that's actually how you're supposed to say it yang i don't, I don't know i don't know but, <laughs> but i've heard really spiritual people say yang so i i think that's the right way and i want to be really spiritual so the most spiritual yeah you really <laughs> gotta let be the it, best you gotta let it hang. spiritual no. <laughs> does that make you have to be like Yee? anyway sorry to interrupt yeah i think you should say it like that from now on we're gonna talk about you since we live in a culture that that like does shame people for being lazies or for or for like shutting down for for not having super high energy my parts have adopted that relationship to to myself and so my parts, like my, especially my mind parts can really shit on my other parts if they are shutting down or if they're feeling overwhelmed to like get into action right away or to, mm -hmm. you know, do something. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't, I didn't do that as much this time. I did it a little bit because I also kind of set an intention to do more when I was here, like to just mm -hmm. kind of move through the tension instead of shutting down in it. Mm -hmm. But also, I was really, really kind to the parts of me that went into dorsal. Like, whenever we're shutting down, whether it's emotionally or physically, like, what those, when we do that, it's because there's parts that are losing hope. Mm -hmm. And so, like, the first thing that we've got to do is love them and have uh. compassion for them. And, and like, they're, they're losing hope that, like, things are safe or things are going to be safe. Mm -hmm. And so like the first thing we have to do instead of like trying to override that, at least in my, with my parts, instead of trying to override that to actually like bring some tenderness and some safety to them. Mm -hmm. And once those parts feel safe, then they don't have to shut down anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So there's my tangent. Yeah. Well, I think that was a great tangent because we've gone through in a very short amount of time, a, a big life change yeah and all the crazies that come with that because i think the one thing i'll add to that is you know we've been planning and preparing for this for probably about three three or four months yeah 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 three months mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a little less and the plan 
can be flawless until in the moment you got to do it. Yeah. That's my one of my favorite sayings is a plan is perfect until the second it starts. Mike Tyson's version of that is everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Mm -hmm. And it is kind of one of those things like like I was saying, my parts kind of had a little freak out moment, too, when it was just like, all right, you're about to get punched in the face. Now what? Yeah. And it was nice to very similar to me were just kind of bring up not really the wild story that the parts were telling of like oh man this is none of this is going to work like now we're really scared you know this is this is too much yeah all those kind of stories that those parts just kind of start to like flood you with but to really bring forth the voice of you know all of that may be true but also here's something that's probably going to be more likely true and this is what we've planned of we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And this is what we're looking forward to. Mm -hmm. And literally a physical sensation of just like, oh, that's right. Okay. Here we go. Arts work, people. It's so fucking practical. practical. It helps with everything. Everything. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by parts work. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now back to... Is there any last little thing you want to say about our transition here? Or... No, I mean, we might sprinkle some more things throughout. We'll but sprinkle it in there. There's, there's a lot that I could say about it, but I don't know if I'm prepared to say something about it. Like, I I don't know what it all means yet. <laughs> what? I don't know if I'm prepared. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. I don't know, like, how to even talk about it. It feels like it's still the moral of it all is still like really still like forming. Mm -hmm. So all I can do is just continue to flow with it yeah well then let's talk about non-verbal communication and why it's important how you can pick up on some of that and what do you do with it that's that's why we're here because a lot of the times you can learn about something but we're here to give you some practical stuff what do you do with all that kooky nonsense so non-verbal communication what would you say is non-verbal communication jordan james the language of your body nice yeah that is I just came up with that but that's a great one it's like you heard it here first people yeah <laughs> language of your body the language of your body i uh, love how my mind works you just ask me a question and just something yeah. really genius comes out Surprise would i myself add anything that. to that because i i think that is it's almost too simple the language of your body but yeah it's kind of the the way that your body yeah, speaks to you. It communicates what what emotions because I think nonverbal communication can tell you a lot about your emotional state. Uh, your heart part. Your heart parts. That's your emotional state. I think it tells a lot about what your parts are protecting you from or what you're hiding internally from the external world. Mm -hmm. Your body will your body will give it away. Mm -hmm. This is the thing why. You know, if we want to make an analogy, poker players, they always wear sunglasses and a hat and like never show any emotion on their face because they have trained themselves very, very well to not let their nonverbal communication show. Because, you know, even just a, a dilating of the pupils or something like that in those high stakes games can give away, you know, whatever. Now, in relationships, none of us train to hide all that kind of stuff, although sometimes we have trained ourselves in the past to stay safe parts of you have trained your body to like you were talking about shutting down is definitely there's definitely non-verbal cues when someone is shutting down going into dorsal correct yeah what would they be so a lot of the times someone getting quiet or getting really short with their words and intense with their like movements that are very like how would i want to say this i want to stop saying like is what i want to do when just be yourself <laughs> myself does not say like <laughs> all right okay parts how would i describe this because i think we've all experienced this personally and then probably also externally when you're with someone and they they can get really closed so like physically closed where like you know your shoulders kind of hunch you kind of get into a defensive pose when people cross their arms and kind of scrunch up like this that can definitely be a shutting down a protecting 
when someone like sticks their legs together and kind of puts their hands in their lap type of thing just that physically shrinking of yourself can be a real shutting down nonverbal cue avoiding eye contact yeah that's a big that's one. a big one yeah that's a big like don't don't approach me don't yeah, bring don't like, bring energy I'm towards scared. me scared yeah yeah mm -hmm. so sure it's it can be more of like yeah i'm afraid of being seen yeah yeah afraid I'm of being afraid seen. of being like perceived mm -hmm. what are some other ones that i'm trying to and usually like you avoid eye contact at least for me i avoid eye contact when i'm going really fast in my mind feels like i can avoid eye contact because i'm trying to be a moving target mm -hmm. i think trying i'm to trying serpentine. what is that when you're like zigzag yeah mm -hmm. yeah like I'm i'm trying to like there's something about the intimacy of eye contact that like kind of puts you back in the present moment or like yeah puts you in intimacy mm -hmm. and kind of yeah and like you're being perceived and you are perceiving mm -hmm. and like that can feel kind of perilous and so I like my parts can just go really fast either with like strategies that we're thinking about or just like things happening in my in my head that I notice in relationships that's one of like the the biggest ways that I try to avoid intimacy mm -hmm. or slowing down is avoiding eye contact mm -hmm. yeah so i think shutting down is is a, a really big your body betrays you on that all the time unless you really train yourself and a lot of the times I, I think the way people train their physical self to kind of hide shutting down is like becoming really like rigid in your body or like you know oop, oop. sorry <laughs> earthquake everybody oh. make sure you're still plugged in shorten up your little cord here a lot of getting really like proper type of thing what do you what do you do when i shut down or do you shut down or do you do something different uh, like what I happens think to you there there i don't know if i really shut down emotionally i'm trying to think like what that experience feels like I think a lot of the times it is like a real avoidance. I'll I'll start to like kind of move in pace. Yeah. I will not stay in one place. Mm -hmm. You know, that can be another form, which I don't know if this is just for men, but like men, we still have this like energy to do something. And so we'll like when someone's pacing or someone's like constantly kind of moving around when someone this is a big cue, I think, for me when I'm like going around, like doing little tasks, little meaningless tasks. Yeah. If I go into the kitchen and I start like cleaning or something or I start Your like one putting come st out. stuff away. Yeah. You know, park can jump in there and be like, oh, you're under distress. So let's, yeah. let's <laughs> distract you here. Let's go clean. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, kind of fidgety movements mm -hmm. uh, that aren't really yeah. achieving anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that are like attempting to control your environment but like not actually a hundred percent that's for me i think when mm -hmm. i shut down the emotional and physiological response is to try and make fake control and so cleaning is definitely one of the ways yeah well i'll just be like oh okay now i'm gonna go clean the kitchen or yep. i'm gonna start putting stuff away yep. or i'm gonna start moving things from here to there uh-huh yeah, and I think for my for me, my strategy parts come out. Like I'll just strategize things or I'll like research things mm -hmm. or whatever that mm -hmm. is. Like that's my version of that. Yeah. So it doesn't always have to be like just a, a shape that your body is taking. It can be an action as well. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, fidgety movement. Pa like we've all paced. And I think this is something we used to do more back in the day when we moved around a lot more. But when you see someone kind of pacing, like that is a physical response of like tension, energy, needing somewhere to go. And I think that's a little bit more masculine energy. It's just kind of been like, we got to keep the wheels spinning here. So we need to do something. Let's let's pace. Let's walk. Let's, mm -hmm. you know, patrol. And another thing that is a real big cue that I've been able to break that I think was a real big tell was like playing with my nails. Yeah, biting like your nails. biting your nails or like now what I do is I'll like clean my nails I'll mm -hmm. like fiddle with my I'll nails do that sometimes yeah that can be you know a real sign that someone's got some nervous energy or for me it's frustrated energy like I used to bite my nails a lot when I was trying to like solve a problem and it was kind of this boredom slash frustration slash confusion 
and so yeah things like that or like little ticks where people will like pull on an ear or like play with their hair or sometimes I like fiddle with my nose or my mouth or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Probably if you oh, watch God. if you watch old episodes you'll see me like playing with my face or something like that another thing I know that some people do is they'll like chew on their fingers or like put their fingers in their mouth yeah you know, that's a real like I sucked sport. on my thumb for a really long yeah. time yeah I think you know that's kind of one of those old responses. I never sucked on my thumb. I sucked on a finger. I would like chew on my I finger. Need something a little bigger. I guess. <laughs> I I remember doing it so much as a kid. I had like a callus on my my finger elbow. What do you call that? Knuckle. <laughs> <laughs> Your finger elbow. Oh, look at all these elbows. Yeah. What else? Picking. Like when you pick it. This is something I do where I'll kind of I'll get bored or confused or something. And I'll start like picking at my skin. <laughs> yeah, me too. Chewing on your hair. I know that's that's kind of one thing. I don't my hair is not long enough to do it, but chewing on your hair can be another nonverbal communication of like stress or frustration or confusion. Mm-hmm. I mean, and even like if you like something or something, usually your body will tend to like lean toward it. Oh yeah. Like your yes. your body will kind of give you away. Like if you are talking, like I think we just read this you know normally if you're talking to somebody and their body is starting to like point away from yours Mm -hmm. it's like okay yeah they're ready to go you know or that they're wanting to open up to to something to bring somebody else in or something like that that's Uh, a great point mm because like body positioning and like distance can be a huge huge nonverbal communication like whenever you like for dating and stuff like that nonverbal communication as far as distance and orientation is a huge thing that like most guys never want to pay attention to but can really tell a lot about really what's important. going on yeah and i i also i don't want to frame this conversation in like yeah when somebody's body is doing this like it means this for sure like i want to frame this conversation in terms of like like igniting your curiosity around something like somebody's body language what if it's just an invitation to ask them about it yeah say like oh i noticed that you're picking your nails or i noticed that you know you're not making eye contact with me is there something happening Mm -hmm. is there what you know would you like to tell me more about that i'm really curious yeah because that's the i think that is the what to do about it too because i 100 percent agree when you notice these things it's not so much a like let's judge somebody or let's try and diagnose psychoanalyze them even like it's it's an invitation to ask a question because you'll never actually know what's happening inside it like you can you can make up a great story you you might you probably have great psychoanalyzer parts like me Mm -hmm. but like you truly don't know what's happening inside of them until you ask Mm -hmm. and so like noticing people's body language and and the the way that their body parts like physical body parts but also the parts of them that live in their body are trying to communicate it can actually help people feel really really seen oh yeah and and it's a doorway into intimacy when you ask them about like their body's responses Mm -hmm. to things because a lot of times our body responds to things so unconsciously that they might not even know what that Mm -hmm. means so it can be a really awesome like inquiry you know for for them right that's a I mean that's part of building intimacy a lot of the times is especially from a masculine and feminine perspective like as a, a masculine towards a feminine helping her see like hey you keep doing this thing like what do you think that means mm-hmm. I'd really like to know mm-hmm. uh, and the opposite way too of of trying to help like you a feminine using her intuition to be like when you're out like you're always you know scrunching your eyebrows which is something i do all the time like is there is there something going on in there you have some tension or it's it's one of those things where it can really open up an understanding of yourself through the curiosity of your partner Mm -hmm. and like that is what starts to create those intimate connections Mm -hmm. yeah it makes me realize how little i comment on your body or like notice your body image it makes me want to just get more curious about your body and yeah, how it's get presenting. Curious. Well, because I, I mean, <laughs> I think I do unconsciously, but like not, not necessarily consciously. Yeah, I have self-actualized a lot of my physical responses because trying to like know myself really well and express a lot of my masculinity, I've 
tried to research this where it's just like, oh yeah, like when I hunch my shoulders like this, or I like, yeah, scrunch my eyebrows, like that puts out a nonverbal message. So it's like, oh no, try and, you know, if, if I want to try and reflect how I'm really feeling, like this is the way like my body should present. And it's like, just kind of becomes natural after a while. But there's always things that your body is doing that you don't notice. And there's things you do with nonverbal communication that you might even be aware of it, but you might not really know what it truly means. Mm -hmm. And your partner's intuition or your partner's just curiosity might even just strike a conversation where you might learn more about yourself and your relationship to each other, because that's what this is all about. Oh, yeah. The third relationship, you yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. especially as a feminine creature, I am on a journey to speak with my body more because I feel like mm. the masculine can really understand the language of the body more than like, I, I guess he can just like really appreciate when the feminine body like opens to him and mm -hmm. closes to him, like mm -hmm. uh, whether that's energetically or he's picking up on like actual, you know, the practicality of physical cues. Yeah. I don't know exactly which it is, but I've just noticed with you, like you're just very attuned to that. I think we all naturally pick up on energetics way more than we realize or want to admit because we all like, and I think we internalize it a lot more of like, oh, I'm feeling weird around you. And it's like, oh, that must be a problem with me when really it's like, no, there's there's some energetic like static going on that I'm interpreting and it's giving me distress. But body language, I, I don't think we really naturally like know. I think it, it's because whenever I learn about body language, whether it's researching it or kind of coming across my own, it's always a like, oh yeah like that's totally true it's kind of a mind-blowing experience where you're just like yeah when you do that that does feel like this mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and it kind of is like oh wow now there's a lot more for me to understand yeah so i think understanding body language both from a masculine and feminine perspective of like who does what because i think there's very similar things we do as men and women and there's very different things we do as men and women masculine and feminine F masculine and feminine yeah yeah like okay there was a couple of things that i wanted to say you need to tell i actually don't i'm actually yeah, okay I'm, I'm getting acclimated this is a little side note here that's kind of fun like when you get out in hot weather your body like starts to sweat like like crazy and then after about five ten minutes your body's just like oh okay i'm all right i'm okay like oh okay this is how yeah. it is sweating that's another oh, crazy huge yeah, verbal non-verbal communication blushing could, all that kind of yeah shit. blushing's fun <laughs> yeah okay with my body i wanted to tell give an example and then i but i also wanted to say one thing too is that so often like as a feminine creature as somebody like who really speaks from the language of my heart about how i'm feeling or like i want i want more intimacy or i want this or this is how i'm feeling like i can just speak in like really feeling words that like your heart parts might understand and like maybe your mind parts will understand a little bit but i feel like when i actually show you instead of saying like i'm feeling sad or i'm feeling scared if i were to actually like show you with my body what that is like mm -hmm. like i i have had the experience that I'm, I just feel more understood. Yeah. And like, I get the response from you that I'm actually looking for mm -hmm. where, yeah. And so like, that's a real challenge for me because I, I mean, the way that I've learned to navigate life so far has been pretty disembodied. Like, I feel like that's also a reason why yes. I have, I was more overwhelmed this time and more shocked coming to another country is because I'm more in my body than I've ever been before. Mm -hmm. And I'm just more here. I'm more present. I'm like feeling the the sensations and feelings in my body more. And it's so it's a challenge for me to like wear my emotions on my body more. Mm -hmm. And I, I just I want to do that more with you because I just I want to learn that skill of like how to communicate with you because like that's kind of the language of intimacy mm -hmm. is like actually embodying my emotions. My parts are scared about that. Yeah, it is a really intimate thing to understand how your body gives you away. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. like yeah. you were saying, like, I think men and women, a lot of the times we're super disassociated from our body. We're so much in the mind. 
so disconnected from the heart so disconnected mm-hmm. from the body that like yeah. we don't even know what it means when we sweat or when we're blinking a lot mm-hmm. or when we're you know or why why we can't stop fiddling yeah why we can't stop fiddling you know a lot of those things we're just like oh i'm just being weird i'm just being a weirdo we need to stop being a weirdo and it's like no 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 there's parts of you trying to communicate in a way and this is your body's response to that Mm -hmm. yeah because yeah i think it is especially for feminine creatures like it is part of your femininity to express through the body because that's like being open to the universe yeah and that's really fucking terrifying yeah so fucking scary for my parts and i'm envious of the women the feminine creatures that are able to like be so embodied with their emotions with their with the words that they use you know it's like man especially being a three like i can just get so caught up in it's like so unconscious of like how i need to perform that even like how my body reacts is a performance of who i think i'm supposed to be Mm -hmm. and if i was told that i'm not supposed to be somebody who feels how i'm feeling like i don't embody that with my body Mm -hmm. like I don't express that with my body and so like I think that's why you're like wow you've been overwhelmed like I haven't really noticed that it's because I get I make sense like and as I look back it's like yeah I just keep all that shit in like I don't actually express that with my body that's kind of been the story of my life of feeling so much inside and then people being like what like you were struggling like I had no idea Anyway, I wanted to tell a story of that happened just yesterday. Great story time. Yeah, because it's something that I'm working on is I've noticed when I want something or when I ask for something, I'll get really small and like childlike kind of and like adorable. Uh And that's how my feminine parts have learned to like get our needs met or like Mm -hmm. request our needs. But that's also not it's adorable, but it's not like sexy it's not like queen jordan Mm -hmm. and so i've been trying to notice like when i'm when i'm acting like a child or when i'm speaking like a child or when i'm yeah like moving my body like a child so like Mm -hmm. i had water over there yesterday and when i wanted it i i just went like this like "Mm." (laughs) you know like i didn't even use words Uh and i was like oh wow that's like i did it like that's like a baby that's like what i did Mm is like i wanted something and so i just acted like a baby until i got it or a child did i did i get it to yeah yeah you gave it to me oh like what are you doing (laughs) No, no, you gave it to me. Like you, you respond really well. Like people respond really well when I'm adorable. Like that's the thing. That is a very natural thing that uh, people pick up on. Yeah, I, I think I do a lot of that too when I'm. Yeah, we both do it. In I've a noticed childlike it. state of yeah. being silly or something like that. Yeah, yeah, and so I'm not making it wrong. I'm just like wanting to expand the way that I can communicate. Mm-hmm. And so then I noticed that, and so I was like, okay, like how would I try to do this differently? Like more of like queen you know, Jordan, what would the queen version of me do? And so then I leaned like really close to you. And I was like, Hey baby, can you put this back over there for me? And you did. And you gave me a kiss on the, on the forehead. I was like, "Mm okay. Like, and I I wasn't even paying attention. No, uh totally. You were using your nonverbal communication. Yeah. Really influence me. Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> yeah so it was like shit like that that's kind of interesting like that's kind of the edge that I'm on in terms of like nonverbal communication is like how can I communicate with my body more consciously mm-hmm. yeah wow great yeah. story Jordan yeah James. that's that's my story that's like an example so yes so what can people learn from that what can people take away from that well I I kind of just want to turn it into an inquiry of like, when you want something, like, how do you usually get it? Like when you ask for things, that's a great, how do you usually ask? Like, how does your, how does your body move when you want something? Yes. This, this makes me bring up something that I think is a huge do not do. And I want to get your take on it too. When you're asking for something, you snap your fingers and point. Mm-mm. Your parts don't like that. I fucking hate that so much. Mm-hmm. And I'm not really sure sure exactly why. But yeah, that is a one-way ticket for me to be like, no. 
do it yourself yeah it's a super insulting thing for me to like have somebody snap their fingers at me Mm -hmm. yeah i'd love to hear more about why that's insulting i mean it makes sense i mean it's a it's a non i mean i don't know if it's non-verbal but it's all it's one of those things of like i don't know exactly why that is but it's it's really a just like stop what you're doing because what you're doing is not important pay attention to me and do what i tell you like that's what it insinuates that's what my parts kind of like shout when someone does that to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of the times my response to that is like, fuck you. Mm-hmm. Don't snap your fingers at me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. This is just so something that I'm that noticing right now. <laughs> you know what? I notice your body more than I think, more than I was conscious of, because like I notice when different parts of you come out, like you move your body differently. Like mm-hmm. that's, that's, or you like speak differently, especially around your face. Mm-hmm. Like when you're feeling a strong emotion, especially anger, <laughs> like your, your mouth like gets kind of tighter, like your cheeks get tighter. Do you notice that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you probably notice it more. And this is probably some good intuition for ladies as far as like using nonverbal communication to see what's going on in your your man's life, or at least your masculine partner. Because yeah, there can be a lot of stuff said in like facial expression. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 totally. Your facial expressions. Yeah. And so I notice I like when your facial expressions start to change or, and like when you start speaking a certain way, I'm like, oh, okay, these parts are here. Mm-hmm. Like this is a different part. And it's like kind of crazy to when you're in different parts of you, like how your face changes. And I'm sure it's the exact same for me, mm-hmm. but parts y'all. Yeah. I mean. For men, I think, or at least whatever, I'm going to say men, like facial verbal cues can really show fight or flight and like critical decision making emotional states of like, I'm about to do something. I'm about to do something that may like, you know, I may have to like, uh, what do I want to say? Take action. You know, I might have to be lethal here for a second. Because a lot of that can be a real tightening of the jaw. It's basically just like a, a ten- tensioning of the spring to release. Mm, oh, yeah, that's exactly yeah. what it looks like. Yeah. And, you know, that can definitely be, you know, when you watch guys like who are drunk in a bar and they're always like posturing on each other and all this kind of stuff. Like there's a lot of verbal cues you can pick up from that as far as like, you know, who really is intent on like doing something and versus who's just posturing who's just trying to overcome an insecurity and so yeah the set of the jaw the intensity of like the stare and like eyebrows tell a lot like my eyebrows tell a lot about Mm -hmm. what's going on for me breath too really shallow short breaths breaths are always (laughs) an indication of like i'm feeling cornered and i'm a i'm like preparing for flight Mm -hmm. or fight Mm mm-hmm so like if you're in an argument or something like that and you have the wherewithal to pay attention to nonverbal communication, like especially for like for men, if you're visualizing that as a man, like he is feeling threatened and like he's not going to listen to you then like he is going back into his like lizard brain. Mm-hmm. And so you may be telling him something super important and it's not it's not going to click. Mm hmm. Like his parts are his firefighters are coming up and like, who wants to fight, (laughs) you know? Mm -hmm. And that's, I think a lot of the times where men really kind of get at a disadvantage because like when you're having a a disagreement or something like that, that is really hits on like a trauma point for a man. Like it's very easy to go into that. Like, I'm going to fight now and I'm going to fight with you. And at that point, like, it doesn't matter if you're saying something super important or you're saying nothing, like none of it's getting through. I feel like it's like that with, with any angry part or any part that's going into fight mode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pay attention to that because that could be a real cue to be like, okay, we need to take, take a step back or we need to like reorient this conversation because at that point you're not, there. there's no communication. Like that's, that's a cue of communication breakdown. Yeah. And you want to avoid that because oh, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What would the, what would what's one of your communication breakdowns? Shutting down. Yeah. So shutting getting down. Really Real confident. shutting down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Getting quiet. I just get like really in my head. And like physically for you, how do you experience that? Not making eye contact is a big one. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it just it just feels like a shutdown, like not making eye contact, like maybe my shoulders are hunched, maybe not. Like, I just want to curl up and go lay in bed. One thing I've noticed. Or I freeze. Yeah, one thing I've noticed when you disconnect is, yeah, a lot of like, you'll just kind of look off in the distance and like, you get kind of tall, like, yeah. you get kind of haughty. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah you I, do yeah, not look I, at me. I don't look at you. Mm -mm. You know, you look yeah. away from me. You yeah. kind of look off into the distance like I'm not there. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like avoiding eye contact. Like there, I even do that just when I'm thinking of, like, just when I'm too much in my head. And sometimes you have to say like, I'm trying to connect with you right now. And then I'm like, oh, oh, oh yeah. Connection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I I just forget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can, or I can get lost. I can, I can forget about it. Mm-hmm. And so I really appreciate it when you're like really explicit about that. Cause then, then I know like, Oh, okay. Yeah. It's time for me to like engage some of my heart parts instead mm -hmm. of like just being in my mind or engage some of my body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause one of the things like we kind of mentioned, nonverbal communications are a great, like a very powerful tool to initiate verbal communication. And I think there's one thing I would caution people is is like when you bridge that gap try and do it from a place of curiosity and not a place of like demand where it's just like hey i'm trying to talk to you and you're often like nowhere long yeah land. don't shame them for that yeah mm -hmm. like we always say and we'll say a thousand times more try not to use shame actually just don't use shame don't try it's not actually necessary yeah. for anything yoda didn't use shame yeah, like whenever there's a part that comes up, whether it's shutting down or fight or flight, like the issue is safety. Mm -hmm. And so like if you're shaming them for like shaming those parts of you for trying to protect you, mm -hmm. like those parts are just that's just going to cause even more inflammation. And that's not going to cause that like the best thing that you can do for them is like help them feel safe in that moment. Mm -hmm. And usually curiosity is a great way to help people feel safe and compassion. Mm -hmm. Those two things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you can start the conversation of saying, I'm noticing you're really not wanting to look at me while we're having this conversation. Like, is there something going yeah. on that, uh, that you'd like to say or a uh, part of you is feeling? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah, mm -hmm. there's one thing I want to add too that I think is a really interesting thing that I know Tony Robbins does when people are in distress. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's like conversation shock. Where you say something really absurd or you say something really shocking mm -hmm. that like derails their train of thought and kind of like sends it spinning so that you can reorient it back to what you're saying. Like one example I saw it was really crazy he was he was talking with someone during his seminars and the guy was like freaking out because he wanted to kill himself and he was kind of going into that real emotional spiral and tony robbins was like i like your red shoes just like in the middle of this conversation where this guy was freaking out just like out of nowhere and the guy was like huh what are you talking i'm not even wearing red shoes and he's like that's great let's get back to the conversation like you were talking about this and it just broke that train of thought and I was like, oh, that's such a weird, mm -hmm. weird thing. But I've seen him do it a lot. And it's one of his kind of signature moves. And I don't know if I've ever had an opportunity to use it, but it is one of those things, too, where when you recognize a nonverbal communication or a nonverbal cue that your partner is giving to you in kind of a stressful situation, it can be that kind of stimulus of like, you know, hey, you're just fiddling with your hands over there, like what's going on like there's there's a part of you that's fiddling with your hands is, is there's something they want to say or something that like they're frightened about or and mm -hmm. it can kind of shock that thing of like oh shit yeah i am like fiddling with my hands what am i feeling mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that curiosity that that questioning invitation yeah 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 i this makes me want to be more explicit with my body about how I'm feeling. Although I have yeah. a, I have parts that they're they're afraid of it because they're like if we actually express in our body the emotions that we were feeling, like people would you would think we were crazy. Like we would be too much. <laughs> we would like you yeah. wouldn't like us anymore and we would be all alone. Well. And then we would die. Yes, parts. <laughs> yeah, like it's like it's so crazy how high stakes this feels. Mm -hmm. Because I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, growing up yeah, like 
showing my emotions in some certain circumstances like could have been life or death actually yeah showing your nonverbal cues yeah mm -hmm. yeah and so like it's it is about going slow and helping those parts feel safe mm -hmm. slowly to show more and more and more yeah. like we can't i can't override those parts yeah this is a really important part too because i think one of the things that narcissistic people do is they have a real attenuation to nonverbal cues because that's how they manipulate you is they notice you're in a state of duress and they're like, all right, I got gotcha. you. Because I have noticed this talking with like super narcissistic people. When you are more spatially aware of what you're doing with your body, like it really derails yeah. their story. Yeah. You know, when you like I had one yeah. time with a boss who was who was freaking out at me because I was checking his like destructive narcissistic narcissistic actions and like i felt myself wanting to like really close because it was a, a full frontal attack mm -hmm. and i noticed that and was like okay i'm going to calm my breath i could feel my breath getting really shallow and short and it was just like no i'm going to take some deep breaths i'm just going to sit here like nothing's happening and like i could see the frustration in yes. his face of yes. like, this isn't working why isn't this working yes. like, why aren't you shrinking yes and like it was one of those things where it's just like uh-huh yeah there you go that is that's the thing like if narcissists don't get your positive attention like they want your negative attention right and if you don't give them either like the like worst thing is indifference the worst thing is them having no impact on you mm -hmm. and like this is another thing that i found really to be a true thing is like proximity can be also a non-verbal cue like if someone always wants to kind of like be away from you so that they can like really shout and really be expressive and like use their hands and all this kind of crazy shit like of course you have to watch out for your own personal safety but like you can close that gap a little bit bring that intimacy in there where there's not the opportunity for someone to shout at you oh and like that can really oh, lower the boiling temperature i do this with you like I, I shout no you don't shout but oh. like i try to like get closer to you really yeah. and like like when when like when you're, I don't know, in it's duress, like, like yeah. just trying, I mean, it's also energetics too. Like I'm trying to, there's like sometimes where I'm like, okay, like I can tell she's getting upset about something. So I'm going to really put out even breath work, calm energy, and then like get close to you mm -hmm. and just let that kind of soak in. Oh my know. God. I'm loved so well, you guys. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And like, you gotta, you gotta pay attention because it doesn't always work too, because proximity can also be a very triggering thing for people as well so don't like box someone to an into a corner be like give me a hug because <laughs> that could be a real crazy thing but like like it, yeah for men to men like community nonverbal communication like getting close to someone but not too close like don't be in someone's face that is a real that's a real huge like <laughs> sign of offense but like getting to you know arm's length when you're talking with someone is a much more I don't want to say civil, but like a much more at even like energetic and physical stance versus like when someone's really trying to back away from you and like build up some steam so that they can, I don't know, be crazy. It makes a difference when you kind of keep that even distance of like, no, you're, I'm not going to let you like take away this conversation. Like we're going to stay right here and we're going to talk this through. Kind of similar thing. I've done this with bosses when they kind of get spun up and it's just like, I'm going to stay close to you so you don't have the opportunity to freak out on me. And like, it it works. It definitely works. Mm -hmm. But don't get too close. That's 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 a weird thing. Like arm's length, <laughs> arm's length, people. If you get in someone's face, like you're asking for it. Like yeah. that is a very not that is a very offending nonverbal cue. And like mm -hmm. some people are just weird about it. It's different for different cultures, too, but. Of course, there's always, always that. But like, I think even kind of in general, I would yeah. say. Yeah, <laughs> I, I kind of, it's a little bit of a tangent, but I kind of had an aha moment mm -hmm. about myself, of course, that the reason why I'm so monotone a lot of the times or like, like my facial, like I don't show a lot of facial expressions, like some, some parts of me when some, when I feel safe and like those parts of me are out, I can be very expressive. Yeah, you like. There's sometimes where you're like super bright eyed and like showing your teeth and like smiling oh, a lot. My teeth. Yeah. Uh, or I'm just like, oh, she's happy. Mm -hmm. Seems happy. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but they're they're I I would say more often than not, like I'm pretty monotone. Like I'm pretty I don't know, not expressive. And especially when I'm on camera or something, or especially when I'm I don't know exactly what it is, or when I'm like trying. I don't I don't know. Or in like new situations, I'm just I can get really monotone and like I have kind of beaded beaded myself up. I beat myself up for that. I have bait myself up. I've bait myself. <laughs> And it made me realize like, oh, of course, like I literally grew up with a narcissist, like a severe narcissist. Like, of course, I I have learned yeah. not to show, not to express, yeah, show tone. expressions on my face. Yeah. Of course, I have just learned to, mm-hmm. you know, be nothing, that's to give no feedback verbal because that's how I keep safe like safety nets yeah Yeah. so that helps me here's the thing people whatever you're like shaming yourself about or beating yourself up on when you put it in the right context of your story and what your parts have had to go through and how they've had to keep you safe like shame just doesn't make sense anymore Mm -mm. so like if you're still feeling shame about something or you're beating yourself up for something i would consider like putting it in proper context in terms of your the whole story of who you are because like Mm -hmm. once you do it just makes so much sense and actually you can go to those parts and be like thank you for protecting me all that time like Mm -hmm. first of all thank you second of all do you like your job and third of all like what do you need to feel safe to get some more flexibility with your job Mm -hmm. like how how could we you know not stay stuck in this one pattern and anymore and how yeah. can we give ourselves some more flexibility? Oh, no, my parts. Great, great job parts. Yeah. Well, and then the other thing, the last oh, yeah. thing that I wanted to say is like looking at for, for body image stuff or body. Non, non-verbal communication. Body stuff. language. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Body <laughs> language stuff. It doesn't always have to be like looking for the bad things. Like one of my favorite oh, yeah. things to do with clients or people that I meet is when I say something and they smile I love saying, what's that smile? Mm-hmm. Like, and they love it. Cause they're like, Oh, I'm so sweet. You know, it just like amplifies that feeling, whatever mm-hmm. it is, you know, whether it's tenderness or like a realization that they had or something. So like, that's, a, that's especially if you're trying to create intimacy with somebody, even like with dating or anything to Absolutely. when they smile to like, ask them more about like, what's that smile for, you oh, know, yeah. like, Oh, that's such a it's almost a flirty thing it, it almost is it's it's just it's intimate mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah well that's that's about a podcast right yeah there. Mm-hmm. so nonverbal communication very important but i would say misunderstood i don't know misunderstood but just unappreciated a lot of the time especially in our culture yeah and like most things in relationship there's your relationship to yourself so knowing your own nonverbal cues can be a real insight into what's going on with you and helping communicate with your partner and then knowing what your partner's nonverbal commute commutes <laughs> nonverbal communications are can help you have insight into what's going on into them mm-hmm. to strike up that uh curious and empathetic conversation that's right so good right yeah i would at the end of the day i would just invite you to get more curious about it curious about you know your own body communication and then curious about the body language of those around you Mm -hmm. and like maybe ask a few questions about it like make it real and Mm -hmm. actually bring it into conversation with other people absolutely and see what uh, you find yeah so play around with it like start with simple things of you know just noticing when your partner does something that like registers with something obvious you know, like, yep. oh, you always smile when I don't know, you see Skittles. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> or you always wag your butt when you're like, you know, playing video games or something like that. <laughs> uh, Hit me. <laughs> yeah. We do wag our tails. Yeah. This is not, this is a real true nonverbal communication. We wag our tails. Yeah. So, yeah. Any last words, thoughts, feelings, Jordan James? No. I Great. feel complete. <laughs> I feel complete. All right, everybody. Well, this is the first of many from the beautiful Puerto Vallarta studio here out on our balcony. And we are super excited to make the Heart is a Muscle podcast even better. Boom, 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 boom. So stay tuned and take care of each other out there. Love you. All right. Bye, everybody.
Bye, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thanks for enjoying this episode of the Heart is a Muscle podcast. We really enjoy creating this content for you, and we want to share some more resources so you can get even more content. So take it away, Jordan. That's right. If you want to follow either one of us on socials, if you want to work with either one of us, if you want access to our YouTube channel, if you want to buy our book, <laughs> links to all that stuff is on our Patreon. So that is patreon.com slash the heart is a muscle. Now you don't have to join Patreon to get access to those links. Um, but you probably should. <laughs> the The more that you support us and support this channel, the more that we can create this awesome content to help support you, because that's really why we do this. We want to make your guys' lives better and uh, your support really matters. Yeah. And what you'll get when you join Patreon is a shout out in our next episode. And you will also get access to listener requests where you will get to request what you want us to talk about in future episodes. So from the Heart is a Muscle podcast to you guys, thank you so much for all the support, all the feedback. We really, really enjoy it. And uh, we'll talk to you all later. Truly love you guys so much. Bye. Bye-bye.